Okay, this will be an unboxing of a 4 slash 5 ton Mr. Cool ducted heat pump. So after doing lots and lots of research, I wanted to go with a DIY model. Uh, it's cheaper and I like doing things myself and I didn't want to spend uh, the $8,000 I got quoted to put a new heat pump in for my current system. And so this is arguably one of the most important uh, sheets on the, the heat pump here is the energy guide. So since this is a 4 slash 5 ton heat pump, it's got uh, two energy ratings, one for the 4 ton mode and one for the 5 ton mode. So those are the two things you see here. Okay, this is the uh, outdoor unit, otherwise known as an old school uh, condenser. And so it's fairly slim. It's, I don't know, about four and a half feet tall and, I don't know, 16, 17 inches wide. So this will go on the outside. This will uh, provide heat in the uh, winter and cooling in the summer. And so it looks like it's constructed fairly well. And then the thing next to it is the air handler. Uh, that will be on the inside or known as the, the indoor unit and there's, just, there's a little bit of a dings I think that got dinged in shipping, but uh, nothing I can't live with so again It's it, it was a great deal. I think I bought the system um, For right around three thousand dollars from Ingram's air and water online I'll leave a link in the description below and so basically it's mounted on a, a half pallet here Which I really didn't care for and then I had them mount that onto the, the full pallet so here, um, I guess one of the screws must have fell out during either shipping or when they made the pallet at um, Mr. Cool. So, well, not the best quality, but again, you know, shit happened. So nothing was damaged in transit. So that's a good thing. So anyway, so this is the outdoor unit. Uh, looks looks pretty snazzy. So I took the cover off, and here you can see um, the inside of it. And I think that's the... Uh, DC to DC uh, or inverter driven coil or it's a choke of some sort so that's what's powering the, the whole system here and so it's fairly compact it looks like it's put together fairly well uh, the electronics here are down below on the right there and um, it, it, it really seems to be put together really really well um, I'm really looking forward to installing this and seeing how it works and hopefully now that you know once this gets in my whole house will be uh, net zero and I won't have any energy bills at all Anyway, so let's kind of dive into uh, what's all inside here. So the, the compressor and uh, the uh, inverter and then uh, all the, the, the circuitry that surrounds the driving of the, of the electronics inside the... Okay, so here's the cover off of the indoor unit. It's very uh, condensed in there. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is the circuit board. It's been, uh, looks like it's been conformal coated. On the uh, outdoor unit here, you can you can make adjustments to put it in four or five ton mode uh, for heating or cooling, and the, that, that's really a beneficial. Um, so in the winter, if, if I need five tons uh, of heating, I can get it. Versus if I need four tons of cooling in the summer, I've, I've got some flexibility there. The only thing I really didn't care for was the the tie wraps. I don't know if they're industrial or what, but tie wraps usually, when they're subjected to high temperatures after a long period of time, they degrade and they'll 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 pop. But hopefully um, they've forethought that, and they're they're heavy duty tie wraps. So here's the, the circuit board. Uh, it's conformal coated, which uh, will prevent it from uh, oxidizing or rusting. And the terminal blocks are fairly beefy. Um, it looks like it's a, a decent design. So there's also adjustability, so I can run it in either four or five ton mode. So if I need four tons of cooling in the summer, I can switch it to four tons. If I need five tons of heating in the winter, I can also use that. And that's uh, done by some dip switches here. But other than that, I mean, I think it's really put together well. It's connectorized well, so if you need to take it apart or troubleshoot it, you can do that. Uh, hopefully I'll never have to do that, but um, the, that's, the, that's the premise behind all this. But anyway, so, so it looks like it's, it's very well constructed. Okay, this is the indoor air handler, or known as the indoor unit. Uh, that's the blower motor that's going to be pushing the hot and air hot and cold air uh, through the through the house. I decided to go with the ducted system versus the uh, ductless. Uh, I just didn't want to run a bunch of refrigerant lines to every room so I just chose the, the ducted system and so there's your your two uh, liquid and suction line valves that will um, connect to the line set and it's a fairly fairly simple looks like very simple design um, looks like it's well put together uh, just like the, the outdoor unit so I'll go ahead and take this apart and you can see the, the insides uh, there's minimal electronics and again like I said it seems like it's fairly decent it's uh, coated in the outside put together fairly decent and it should be fairly robust for many years to come well at least that's what it looks like 
So again, product from Mr. Cool, and here you can see um, the, the ratings. There's a roughly a 750 watt uh, blower motor on the inside that kind of pushes the, the air through the, the air handler and um, provides the heating and the cooling. So this is the indoor air handler with the cover off. You can see there's a blower motor and this is the electronics. This looks like this is a little uh, circuit board with some kind of a looks like 5 or 15 volt regulator. It's probably powering some electronics and then there's a, a transformer in here and then the, the circuit board for the indoor unit and you can make adjustments for the uh, 4 ton slash 5 ton model. Uh, again, it, it seems to be put together fairly, fairly decent. Um, and I'm really excited to, to kind of put this in and want to see how it works and you know just the, the learning portion of how to do your own HVAC system so that's the that's the indoor unit and as you pan down here you can see that's the air the a coil uh, that's where the the air gets moved through the system to either heat and cool and that's the, the capillary valves uh, that's used to pump refrigerant you know through that uh, a coil so the inside looks like it's uh, insulated and uh, hopefully that'll help with the sound deadling and there's a, T, a TXV valve that's used to reverse the flow of the refrigerant and it's a fairly it's a fairly compact design again it's all fairly insulated and looks like it's uh, put together uh, fairly well uh, the the only thing I, I, I didn't like that the, the model didn't come in with the an air intake that, that came in from the side uh, my, my uh, furnace uh, old system has an air intake that comes in from the side here the Mr. Cool unit you have to bring the air in through the bottom that's the only thing I didn't like um, the only thing I can really do is I gotta build a stand to put the uh, the air handler on so it can draw air from the from the bottom and then out through the top and I'll kinda show you that a little little later in the video but again this is uh, the indoor portion and you can also have the option of adding heat strips in case you're in a really really cold environment but I'm not gonna need that where I'm at Okay, here's the slot for the for the air filter. Uh, fairly compact. Again, uh, the air comes in from the bottom versus versus the side if it's standing up. So I'll uh, replace this with a with a different uh, air filter that's uh, higher in MERV value. But then again, it's just the slot for the for the air filter, um, and so it just kind of bolts on like this to some thumb screws that hold it on and uh, easy to replace. And then the, the black uh, little uh, circular things there, where you're going to put your 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 drain for the condensate. So uh, if you know how to work with mechanical stuff. Um, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. Doing a DIY job is the fact that this Mr. Cool has a um, line set that's pre-charged, so you don't need to hire an HVAC guy to vacuum out the lines and then pump it full of refrigerant. You can uh, basically connect your lines to your outdoor unit and then your indoor unit and uh, check for leaks and you're done. So you don't need any add any refrigerant. You don't need a HVAC guy to charge you, I don't know, two, three hundred bucks to come over and uh, vacuum everything out and you know the old school method. So this is all kind of a self-contained uh, system that you can put in without any need for an HVAC guy if you're good with mechanical and some electrical. So, like I said, the refrigerant lines are all pre-charged. I need a 35 foot line. This is kind of uh, what they look like. So it's got insulation on it and the uh, 3 quarters and 3 eighths inch uh, lines are inside there. And then once you get the outdoor unit and the indoor unit installed, you basically run this line set between the two. and then you can turn your system on and you should be uh, ready for action. The other thing I noticed on the outdoor condenser was that the, uh, the capacitors that they supplied seem to be uh, industrial grade caps are rated at 105C and so that's uh, roughly something over 200F. So those are uh, really high industrial grade temperatures that you, you want to have when your unit sits outside and bakes in the sun. So that, that, that's always a, a good sign. So this is the uh, packaging. Um, I already ripped it up, but I basically should have should have filmed this, but I didn't because I had to basically inspect the the both of the units to make sure there was no damage. Um, Ingram's uh, did a good job of uh, shipping it. Uh, the problem was 
Averett or Averett or however you pronounce it, uh, they royally screwed it up. The, 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 they, they dropped the outdoor unit and it dinged the condenser. So I had to have it reshipped twice by that same company and they screwed it up twice. So basically, um, I think this resulted from the way the, the outdoor unit um, was bolted to, it looks like a half pallet. And the half pallet was just, it was unstable. It wasn't a good design. And the air handler, or out, I'm sorry, the air handler indoor was put on its own pallet, which doesn't make any sense. So basically, uh, I asked Ingrams to uh, have both the outdoor unit and the indoor unit put on a single pallet and shipped that way. I like the way they package this. It looks like it's kind of on a half pallet. So it wasn't real stable in the transport. Uh, the company that shipped it uh, broke it twice. And so I had to have two returns and you can kind of see it doesn't take a lot of force to wiggle it. And if you're careless, like some shippers are, um, it will tip over. So it's been dented twice and I had to return it. Okay, here's the uh, outdoor unit. Uh, it's the first time that Avert Express shipped it. They drop it or damage it and then they ship it again and they jack that up but again this was this was the shippers um, issue and not um, Ingram's water and air. They did a great job they replaced the unit twice and I actually asked them to take both of the units and put it onto one pallet and shrink wrap them so they can't move around and once they did that um, I used a different uh, carrier I think it was XPO and they delivered it it was perfect so I'm really happy with it. Okay, this is the outdoor unit, the old one I'm going to replace here. It's, uh, I think it's either a three or a three and a half ton. Uh, it, it's, it's at the end of the life. It's uh, been 21 years. It's worked well, but again, the indoor A coil is leaking, and then I, I just want to go all electric, no natural gas. So now is the time to start replacing this. I'm going to have to cut the lines and then uh, do some manual labor and get the frame out and basically clean all this stuff up. So that, that's the task uh, for the outdoor part. And hopefully I can get it in before summer before it gets uh, hot as hell and I'm not sweating uh, profusely while I'm putting this in. So this is, this is my outdoor unit and I want it to be really condensed because I got solar panels. This is my uh, HVAC system here. It's basically a natural gas furnace. Um, and then it's got an electric condenser outside. So it's, it's electricity and it's also gas. So I've been meaning I want to get rid of gas altogether. I want to be completely 100% renewable energy to where I control my destiny on my power costs, which are now nothing once I install this. So that, that's the idea behind this. I could have went with a dual fuel, natural gas, heat pump, um, but the problem is that I'm paying for fuel essentially I can make myself with solar panels. So here are my two refrigerant lines going in. Um, this will all need to be um, basically kind of reducted out. I'm gonna to have to cut this out. I got a water heater um, that's literally too close here so I'm gonna to have to scoot this out about I don't know five or six inches or so. Um, the way the Mr. Cool set up you have to bring the air in from the bottom. The way my system designed is the air comes in uh, from the side here so I'm gonna make some kind of adapter or a stand basically to to put this air conditioner on that raises it up. Uh, I don't know it's like 23 inches or so. Um, the other thing is this old system here um, needs 120 volts that comes in so the 120 volts powers the blower. Um, the new one needs 240 so I gotta run either a, a 240 volt line to the um, indoor air handler here or um, make some kind of a 240 to 120 uh, transformer um, converter that can convert 120 to 240 and power the, basically there's a blower inside that needs to be powered. So it's a, a three quarter horsepower blower, which is roughly uh, 750 watts. So um, that's kind of the task in front of me. And since it's all running on natural gas, I'm gonna have to uh, cut this line here into the, into the furnace and pull this whole assembly out, as well as uh, I have a, basically this uh, natural gas hot water here. It's been sitting here kind of as a holding tank. Um, so I'm gonna have to basically cut where the uh, natural gas comes down and goes into the uh, the water heater. 
and then uh, and this part here goes into the uh, the furnace. So I'm gonna have to cut cut here and then braze it shut. Um, and in case I ever need to get gas or I sell the home or something where I need gas, I still want to have access. So I'm gonna basically put a a shutoff valve and then cap it here. So that's kind of the the project ahead of me. Um, I'm gonna pull this water heater out. I don't need it anymore. I've got a heat pump in the back here, so I'll move this over here. Again, this is just kind of a holding tank to kind of warm the water up so the heat pump doesn't have to work as hard. But anyway, so this is the, the project ahead of me. Again, um, if you're a DIY person, you can do this yourself. Or it's gonna require some labor. Uh, I got quotes for putting in a new uh, heat pump that's uh, roughly about $8,000 to do all this. And so the heat pump itself was a little less than uh, three grand. So I'm gonna try and do it all myself and save a, save a bunch of money probably some headaches I gotta work through but um, anyway so that, that's the task the other the other thing I wanted to replace this is because the the a coil inside here is starting to uh, it's starting to leak uh, refrigerant so I had to have it charged and there, there's definitely a leak in here and so I, it's 21 years old going on 22 years old and I just want to get rid of it so that's the task and you'll see some more videos to come all right, so I hope you like my unboxing. Please like and subscribe and look forward to more videos coming soon.